Am I the butthole for asking if my cousin made her first million yet? Hello friends, I'm from the future. Throw away, yada yada. Well, technically we're a few hours away from 2021. So advanced happy new year. I'm currently outside on our terrace while my family is gathered in the living room after having asked me to step outside for a bit, because apparently I've ruined the mood. I'm turning to you guys to ask if I'm the butthole for what I just did. Family from all over the city has gathered to celebrate the new years. COVID is thankfully low in my city and we've taken the necessary precautions. As is typical of Asian family reunions, the old people in the family love to check up on their nieces and nephews. One of my aunts A, loves to show off her kids' achievements, particularly her daughter Pat. While listing off her daughter's achievements, passing the bar, recently getting married to a fellow lawyer, my aunt turned to me and asked what I've achieved in 2020. She began to list off all my lack of achievements, like how I'm 30 and still unmarred, I'm a dude, if that matters, about how I'm still living at home with my parents and how I'm still driving my crafty 2000-something Civic. My other cousins joined in on the jeering and listed all the other failed aspects of my life. Now, I graduated with a degree in architecture, but after multiple attempts just can't seem to pass the exam. This has been a point of contention in the family because my other cousins are lawyers, teachers, etc., whatever. These days I basically work freelance from home. I don't know why, but my aunt's condescending voice got to me and I said I made my first million this year. Has Pat made her first million yet? Then turning to my cousins I asked the same, you guys made your first million yet? Because I have. The room fell silent. I basically killed the mood. My dad asked me to go outside and relax because apparently I might have just ruined everyone's New Year celebration. Was I a butthole? P.S. First million in our local currency not USD. NTA. Why does everyone get to dump on you without you defending yourself? That should have ruined the night for your parents, them dumping on you like this. It's all fun and games when they attack without reprisal but the moment you hit them back with their own medicine, silence. Oh yes, they all hate when the table is turned on them. Well well well, how the turntables. I, just like Op, am from the future. I can attest, as a time traveler from the future, that I saw this one coming. I thought we all agreed that there was no time traveling back to the year that must not be named or somebody might accidentally revive the plague also no meddling with natural events, we're already over our heads in the time travel affairs head office. I had to kill three time travelers from 2022 who were trying to stop COVID so I could prevent the timeline where President for Life Donald Trump starts an all-out nuclear war with China in 2026. Thank you for your service. This comment got me good. Still laughing as I type this. Yes. This. Our slash unexpected office, Reddit link. Our slash expected office, Reddit link. More like completely expected office. Them sowing, haha ha f yeah. Yes. Them reaping, well this effing sucks. What the f edit, I must credit of this perennially useful gem. Web link. So true haha ha, and then they're the real victims. I may never find a more accurate comment to describe my family. They can rib on me for three straight hours, but the second I do the same I get met with why do you have to be so sensitive? Or if I get mad you have anger issues. And they wonder why I've completely cut them out of my life. This year was the first time I didn't contact my entire immediate family on Christmas. Not so much as a text message, and if I have it my way, It'll stay that way till I die. F those scumbags, man. I'm ashamed to come from that lineup of terrible excuses for people, but hey, what can you do? Cutting them out entirely is one of the best choices I've ever made, and I hope that on their deathbeds, both my parents will think about why I'm not there, and it will fill them with deep regret. I hear you. My father was great to me, although he had his own demons, he wasn't great to my mom, but he died when I was a kid. So I grew up in a fairly conservative family, and got given crap for all the weird kids I hung out with. Because some lived in a trailer park, some were different races, some, looking back, might have been on the spectrum, etc. Anything that didn't fit a suburban white definition of normal was my weird friends. And you know what? 
They were my friends, because every single one of them showed more heart, compassion and understanding than my own family. Would take any one of them over my mother in a heartbeat. Unexpected awe. I know this feeling make friends and family that you can trust and have mutual love for. Unfortunately insight is stunted for many people. Reading this collection of articles may help you deal with what may happen down the road of peace. Web link. I walked away from from my family over 25 years ago. Limited contact and then dropped it off completely. At the time my brother called me, this had been extremely rare prior to this, and said my parents were ready to forgive me I asked forgive me for what in my eyes this was their issue and he replied, well I don't want to talk about it. So with a well you called me and brought it up but don't want to talk about it there's not much to say silence and we hung up. Since then I've received an occasional letter from them but they went unanswered. At one point one of my brother's kids wrote a few letters and they were ignored. I never knew her as she was born the year I broke contact. After a few failed letters from her I received a letter from my mother's brother, uncle with a brief answer your niece, so not wanting to unload on a 10 year old I wrote her letter saying I wasn't going to unload family issues on you so please pass this, sealed envelope, onto your mother, Sill, and explain to her the issue. I broke down to her what happened and the why things are the way they are and the reasoning for the loss of contact. She responded with a wow I had no idea as that was different from the story my parents told, I was never informed of what that story was. This all happened before the advent of Facebook and the like so fortunately there was internet drama and I've always been guarded and locked down and so how it stands there is no contact with any member of my immediate or extended family in well over 15 years, I can only imagine what they said. Bit of. A ramble sorry. Web link. Thanks for this. First time I've encountered emotion creates reality versus reality creates emotion and considering these as worldview framing is incredibly helpful, I'm in the latter camp so anything illogical just drives me batty. Excellent article, thanks. You and me both. Not a single word was said between bio family and myself. I haven't spoken to the egg donor in five years plus, and the last time I spoke to a sibling was when I was hospitalized for emergency surgery, in the summer of 2018. I don't miss them, even a little. They're all mask denying, COVID denying, pro Twitter buttholes, and my life is much better without them. Oh yep. Been there. In my mother's eyes, my grandmother was always allowed to say whatever awful things to me but if I try to defend myself I'm suddenly being rude. Ah, double standards, huh? Absolutely. For me it was my brother. He was my mother's golden child. He turned antagonizing me into a sport, and of course her answer to me was always just let it go. To this day, my brother is the only one I've been in a physical fight with, and there have been so many I can't count. This is why they tell me I have anger issues, which, by the way, my wife thinks I don't, she's a doctor, and most friends tell me I'm one of the least angry people they know. So I've had this rhetoric shoved down my throat my entire life because my mother couldn't admit my brother is a effing bastard. It only got worse as I got older, because him and my uncle would get drunk together, and feed off each other and sit at dinner, in front of everyone and just lay into me for a solid hour straight. Mind you, it's not like I'm the family screw up. I married the girl I met in high school, got my first job two months out of college that was well paying in IT, moved out and never moved back in, now make really good money, own my own home, etc. Everything a suburban white conservative family views as being successful although honestly none of it is as important as friends and my wife. Uck even writing this out just makes me loathe them even more. Honestly, stop going over for family dinners. You don't have to subject yourself to that kind of treatment. I am the you, in my bio family. I had to cut contact for my own emotional and psychological being. At some point I had to prioritize me, they certainly weren't going to. Good luck to you. You know, I always want people like you to adopt me, just long enough to put your family in their place. My family doesn't bother saying anything to me because my mouth is big and they will most certainly come off worse in the end. I don't make snide comments about people, they really should not try do that to me. Good for you for getting rid of toxic people in your life. Wow. Did I write this and forget? I can be the family whipping boy, but as soon as I return fire, in kind, not even escalating the rhetoric, then I'm the ah? I have found the best revenge is a life well lived. Thus is the life of the family scapegoat. 
My family would pick on me and pick on me until I would explode when I was younger, and then they would turn around and call me psycho for reacting naturally to their relentless bullying. The only one who never did was my dad. But of course now, years later, that never happened and they never called me that. It's just me making things up to make them look bad. He didn't even hit them back basically just said I'm more successful than you think and just because I don't have the same jobs as you guys it doesn't mean I'm not making more money. Like the way he ruined the mood is just by explaining he's not a f up like they think and now their night is ruined cause they lost their punching bag. He accidentally hit where it hurt. They probably knew original post was well off and brought on down to earth and he promptly bitch slapped them back into the bucket they were trying to drag him into. Apparently that was the mood he ruined. It was the mood of everyone having fun at his expense. Wow. Yeah it's honestly one of the craziest things I've read here in a way. It's not overtly crazy, but just the completely normalized idea, so normalized this guy even questioned if he was wrong, that he should have continued being crap on so that the family could keep having fun crafting on him and he's in butthole for stopping it cause they were having fun. Like what the f is this family? It can be pretty standard in Asian families. I'm the family punching bag for my extended family too. They'll take any chance they get to dump on the scapegoat and try to live rent free in their head. Also they get really, really mad when the scapegoat turns out successful for some odd reason. It's like a bad Asian drama plot, but Earl. The best revenge is living life happy, flaunting the hobbies they crap on, and being a good person. At least it gets them to shut up. How dare you throw their own logic back in their faces, zany face. NTA. If they don't want to hear comparisons and criticisms from you, then they shouldn't make comparisons and criticisms against you. Right? Like, everyone was fine with crafting all over op. So somehow everyone attacking him isn't a mood killer but the moment he points out that he is a financial success, he's responsible for killing the mood. How is his financial success a mood killer, unless they didn't want to know that original post is actually more financially successful than the doctors and lawyers and teachers in his family? Truth hurts, huh? If they weren't being buttholes, they wouldn't have been embarrassed by reality. NTA There was a post on here a while back where the guy was extremely financially successful, but never went to college. His family really begrudged him that, even though he was doing quite well for himself. I'm getting the same vibes here. His family seems to think original post did not pass the certification so he does not deserve to be successful, like the doctors and lawyers of the family. How dare he make everyone else seem like a failure when he is the one who failed? The fact that the aunt and the cousins were allowed to pile on original post like that but as soon as he fights back he's the problem indicates to me that his family agreed with everything being said. It's just horrible. Not original post but you'd be surprised how common this is in Asian households. Reunions are bragging contests for parents to show off their kids. Traditional jobs slash careers are looked up to while creative endeavors and non-traditional careers are considered as just a phase or something that isn't worth as much merit. My wife's family is the same, she never graduated college but we're a happy and successful couple 10 years out of college with a wonderful child. Guess what her mom says is a shame, every single visit. I'll never understand that crap. Like, I think everyone should go to college, for free, at least until our education system catches up, and I think the US is horrifically behind most of the first world in terms of education, dash but, Christ, the last thing I'm going to say to someone who succeeded without it is man you're doing so well, it's just such a pity you don't have a degree. Like. Whatever the value you may eke out of college, that piece of paper basically says I have been told the very basics of something possibly related to my field. Cool. It's a foot in the door, at best. College gives you the opportunity to expand your horizons and grow as a person, in ways many, many people are deprived of at home, as well as teaching deductive reasoning and critical thinking skills that are woefully undertaught in grade school. It's basically your opportunity to fall, get up, and try again, without mommy and daddy hanging over you to try and tell you what to do every step of the way. If you can achieve all that without it, awesome. If you can forge a happy, successful life without it, awesome. A piece of paper won't add to that. If you want to go get it, get it. If you don't care, don't waste your time nor money. Although, that said, I kind of suspect the people who care about a diploma to that degree would probably suck all the joy and life out of the experience anyways. God I hate people. 
It's a foot in the door, at best. I think you're seriously downplaying the advantage a diploma provides. I don't hold any disrespect against people who succeed without college degrees either, but it's a pretty big deal, depending on the field. In some areas a college degree is pretty much a requirement if you want to make any progress. It very much depends on the industry and level of the degree though. I've had really well-paying jobs with no degree whatsoever and also been capped by my lack of a degree because the field is really technical. I think in the context of this thread, though, that your point has the edge over the one you're replying to, nobody really wants a doctor, lawyer or architect or accountant without a degree, but they also aren't necessarily the best-paying jobs in the world either. I can relate so much that this is making me incredibly sad. I didn't finish college and there's no end to it for most of my family. Always such a shame that I haven't got a degree. I have a very high paying job though now, I'm 24 year old, have purchased two cars, my condo and another property, supported my immediate family, financially, have investments. But. Still looking at me with raised eyebrows due to my educational status. Won't even count any self-study slash diplomas slash certifications I achieved and had to go through on my own to get the job I wanted, as it did not came from a well-established university. It sucks big, big time. I'm so sorry. For what it's worth, you are successful. Your family's inability to acknowledge that does not take away from your success. Your family may never accept your success as legitimate, but that doesn't mean it's not success. Their small-mindedness doesn't reduce what you have achieved. I hope your family comes around, but know that this internet stranger is proud of you. I would have a difficult time providing any sort of financial support to someone who needed to criticize my life choices. Along the lines of if you don't appreciate that my choices and work ethic have given me the ability to assist you, then perhaps you don't appreciate my assistance, either. Maybe that assistance should be withdrawn. Seriously. I don't know if I'm just petty as hell but if someone kept on criticizing my job slash career they ain't getting any of the money I earn from said career. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube. And share them with your friends. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. We welcome your comments below. Another of our videos will begin shortly.